Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries. My name is Robert Newman, and I have been involved with Faro Hounds for the last 15 years. I am currently the president of the Faro Hound Club of America. So the way I discovered the Faro Hound breed is I was originally looking to adopt a greyhound. And at the time, I had multiple small dogs in my house. And um, they said that perhaps a, a retired racing greyhound was not a good match for small dogs and I love the look of the Greyhound and the Pharaoh Hound obviously is very similar. The story about Pharaoh Hounds and their history is that they were originally imported by Phoenician traders onto the island of Malta and that is where they originally um, became known. The use for the Pharaoh Hound and what they originally used for um, was for rabbit hunting and their actual name on the island of Malta is Caleb Tel Fennec, which means the rabbit dog. The American Kennel Club um, Parent Club, which is the Faro Hound Club of America, that is the only club recognized by the AKC in terms of the Faro Hound breed, established the standard for the Faro Hound. The standard in terms of heights for males would be 23 to 25 inches in height and for bitches or females it would be 22 to 24 inches in height with weight ranging probably between 35 pounds for a small female to 55 pounds for a male at the top of the standard. Interestingly in the Pharaoh Hound standard there are no disqualifications in terms of height, weight except for the only disqualification under the American Kennel Club is any Faro Hound that has a solid white mark on the back of its neck or on its side. The gene that carries white markings within the breed, if that gets overbred and the white spreads too far, it, it deviates too much from the standard. In terms of this AKC standard with respect to the head and specifically the ears, the ears should be held upright. They are not cropped, they are natural ears. They should be held erect, not to the sides, giving it a Yoda type look, which is undesirable and not too closely held together, but upright and erect. sight hounds versus scent hounds. It's really a designation of what that particular hound uses as its primary hunting source. So a sight hound is a hound that hunts by sight versus, for instance, a bloodhound, which is a scent hound and hunts primarily based on scent. The pharaoh hound is actually considered both a sight and scent hound. In terms of the history of the Pharaoh Hound, um, there's a bit of controversy. You ask Pharaoh Hound owners and they'll tell you that the Pharaoh Hound is the oldest documented breed of domesticated dog and is actually found within tombs um, in Egypt and depictions of the Pharaoh Hound can be found there. Um, in terms of connection of the Pharaoh Hound to other hound breeds, they are all obviously somewhat related. Um, the Saluki, for instance, is another ancient hound breed that is a sight hound, as well as the Greyhound. Um, in terms of the exact genetic relationship, or if one came from the other, uh, that's pretty much unknown. Another interesting fact about the Pharaoh Hound in terms of its use for, hunt, for hunting and what's recognized in the breed standard is a white tip on the tail of the Pharaoh Hound is considered desirable. Um, and that is believed to be because of the fact that they would go out and hunt and it was on very rocky and cavernous terrain. 
and the pharaoh hound farmers who use them for rabbit hunting would be able to see when they had spotted a rabbit because their head would go down, their tails would go straight up in the air, and they would see the tail, white tail tip on the pharaoh hound. It's also rumored that farmers used pharaoh hounds with actual ferrets when hunting. When the pharaoh hound would chase the rabbit and the rabbit would go into a hole, they would then send in the ferret to flush the rabbit out. The one thing in terms of having a pharaoh hound as a pet that all potential pet owners should know is that the pharaoh hound is a very vocal breed. If you are close to neighbors or if you are gone for extended periods of time, the pharaoh hound may not be the right pet for you because they're a very vocal breed and they will bark both at their displeasure and for pleasure. So my trick is when every pharaoh hound that I've gotten, the first trick that I've taught my pharaoh hounds are to speak on command so that I was able to then turn that off and not reward that behavior when I didn't ask for it. But they are a very vocal breed. Like all sight hounds, the pharaoh hound is not what one would typically call a cuddly dog. However, they are an incredibly affectionate dog with their owners. Um, the breed says that they may be aloof, uh, particularly with strangers. But in terms of their own family, they usually get very connected to at least one person and that is the person that they probably exhibit the most affection for. When they, another interesting thing about the pharaoh hound is when they become excited or um, pleased with something, they are known as a dog that blushes. So their face, the insides of their ears, and their chest area will all flush a bright red color. So they're called the blushing dog. Pharaoh hounds are also incredibly good, typically, with children. Cats may be a different story. Animal aggression with a pharaoh hound is rare. However, they do have an innate instinct to hunt and to chase. So unless your pharaoh hound is raised from a very young age around cats, um, you would need to use a lot of exercise, a lot of caution when introducing a pharaoh hound, particularly an older pharaoh hound, to cat. The socialization for the pharaoh hound, particularly at a young age, is absolutely essential. So socialization of the pharaoh hound, particularly at a young age, is absolutely essential. They're a sight hound, which means because they can be aloof, they're not socialized at a young age, meeting strangers, going to new places where there are different sounds and sights and noises, um, is really going to potentially give you a dog that is skittish or standoffish, which we don't want. The pharaoh hound standard says the dog should be affectionate and friendly. The best way to accomplish that is early, early socialization. In terms of training, the pharaoh hound is incredibly easy to train, partly because they are an incredibly food-motivated dog, which always makes training easier. However, they're also a stubborn dog and can be unpredictable at times. So I would never recommend that feral hounds are off leash in an area that's not completely enclosed. I can't stress enough, they're not an off leash breed because no matter how well trained your feral hound may be, they are sight hounds. If they spot something a quarter of a mile down the road that you may not even see and they're off leash, no matter how well trained, if that pharaoh hound decides it's going to go after whatever it spotted, the dog won't come back. So it's very dangerous for the dog. So they are not an off-leash breed unless they're in a contained environment. They are very trainable, however, with a small, stubborn strength and a wide, mischievous streak. So the right personality for the um, right personality for a feral hound owner would be somebody who's fairly active, um, who it's not 
This is not a dog that's going to be content being housed inside 23 hours out of the day or laying around on the couch. They are an active, busy breed. They need to be exercised. They need to be worked. They need to be active because if you don't give them that kind of activity, their frustration will manifest itself in chewing and other destructive behaviors. So the Pharaoh Hound is a breed that needs a fair amount of exercise. It's certainly not a couch dog or a lap dog. Um, there are many activities that the Pharaoh Hound um, can engage in, not only dog showing or confirmation, but also Pharaoh Hounds, a lot of them typically compete in lure coursing events where they'll be out on the field and they chase after a simulated rabbit. Great exercise for them and also obviously employs their natural hunting instinct. The ideal home for the Pharaoh Hound is a home that has a backyard that's obviously needs to be completely fenced. We recommend the Pharaoh Hound Club of America recommends that Pharaoh Hounds have a backyard with no less than a six foot fence because Pharaoh Hounds can scale anything lower than that. So that's the ideal home. They certainly can live in an apartment or in a condominium. That's just going to increase with no backyard. The, it's going to increase the amount of activity that you're going to have to do outside of the home. In terms of the health of the Pharaoh Hound, we are a breed that has been very lucky in terms of genetic diseases. They are a very healthy breed, not subject to a lot of genetic issues. Um, we do see cancer at times in the breed and there are other issues, but no serious genetic issues that pop up with a lot of frequency. The life expectancy of the Pharaoh Hound is typically 12 to 15 years. Another issue that Pharaoh Hound owners should be aware of is within the Pharaoh Hound community, we all know what the phrase counter surfer means. And that is because Pharaoh Hounds are notorious for stealing food off kitchen counters. And they do it with ama amazing stealth and amazing efficiency. Um, they are a really somewhat goofy and clownish breed. They're incredibly entertaining. When they get excited, they also smile and will show you all their teeth at, at, when they're excited or happy to see you. Um, they are a very smart and um, goofy, clownish sort of breed. So the first dog that I showed you today, his name is Wink. He came from an incredibly special litter and um, has accomplished really great things. He, has, he is a best in show winner. He has won a, he's a multiple Pharaoh Hound Club of America national specialty winner. He is a multiple hound group winner. He is a hound show, best in show winner. He also competes in lure coursing. He is a multiple best in field winner. Um, and last year he was the number one Pharaoh Hound in the United States. And then the second dog that you saw was Wink's son from the first litter that he is the sire of. And his name is Walker. He's very young, he's at 14 months old. Um, dogs can't compete in confirmation until they're six months old. So I began showing Walker when he was six months old and at eight and a half months he had finished his confirmation championship very, very early. Um, very rare that a dog has finished his confirmation championship. He accomplished that by going best of breed over dogs that were already champions. Interestingly, I had never seen um, a Faro Hound in person before my first one arrived from New York. And um, I will tell you that from the moment that dog came out of his crate from the airplane, um, I fell in love with the breed. They are unlike any other breed, and I've had a lot of different breeds of dogs. They are unique 
um, in their characteristics, in their personalities, um, and they're an incredibly special, special breed.